Hello and welcome back to the Ambassadors of Gaming. I'm one in your army of hosts, Ambassador Michael. And today I'm going to discuss with you another game that we didn't get a chance to review. So it's one of the best games of the generation. We are handpicking some of the best games in the lead up to the fall 2020 of next gen and kind of documenting some stuff we didn't get a chance to go over. A uh, more in-depth look at uh, some of the games that came out through throughout the generation. Today I wanted to discuss with you Marvel's Spider-Man on uh, PlayStation 4. It released in the fall of 2018 and it was one of the more sleeper kind of hits for PlayStation in terms of exclusives. Um, I mean, it was granted it was going to sell well, I think, as an exclusive. It was tied to Marvel. Marvel's massive right now. Uh, they were at the time, even when at the time of the announcement. Spider-Man's one of the most popular characters in Marvel. He's one of the only characters out of Marvel's entire studio that repeatedly gets solo games. So he he's very popular among gamers. He's very popular as an IP. So not really a surprise in hindsight that it did well. But Activision had owned the IP for so long and had controlled uh, what they would and wouldn't allow with Spider-Man. Um, granted this was with old marvel as well um they worked with disney a bit once they bought out marvel but not so much um a as much and then obviously that deal fell through and then marvel took over the ips and licenses and now they just handle stuff on their own and they contract out how they will uh, and that's kind of how we ended up with the spider-man game and so one of the big complaints with spider-man games is the uh, scope of the city of new york and the swinging and combat um it hasn't always been done well uh specifically wall crawling is really bad in a lot of uh, older spider-man games i've not played all the spider-man games let's be clear there's a lot of them but i've played a lot of them i played the playstation one the two on playstation one spider-man and i think it's return of electro or something like that uh, Electro's Revenge, I'm not sure really what it's called. Maybe I'm thinking of Spyro titles. But anyways, it's one of those things. I've played the movie Spider-Man, the Sam Raimi movie Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. I've played both variations of Spider-Man 3, as we've discussed before. There's a, a PS3 360 version and a PS2 version, and they're two different games. And I've played Ultimate Spider-Man, a PS2 uh, GameCube generation game. And I'm trying to think. I don't think I played any of the Amazing Spider-Mans, and I didn't play any of the weird Activision ones on uh, last gen. But one of the major concerns was that they weren't really going to nail it. Um, and Insomniac had kind of been away from Sony for a bit. They did their stuff with uh, Sunset Overdrive, and that didn't do as well as people were hoping. But people that had played it knew that Insomniac still had gameplay down, and it seemed pretty obvious even then that like if anybody were to do a game like that it would be insomnia so they came through they really sat down with marvel they really sat down to, to think about these types of things and obviously uh one of the big things about it is they sat down to kind of kind of mimic that arkham style combat in terms of the gadgets and and the free flow combat and kind of how he maneuvers in combat um, it's a little more fluid than Batman, um, obviously because Spider-Man has superpowers that you have to reflect, so you have to reflect his strength and his agility and his speed, uh, along with his web shooters, so it's a little bit different, it's a little bit more fast paced than Batman, where Batman's is a little more grounded, uh, Spider-Man's combat is a little more aerial, I don't think it's as aerial as I was, I was hoping it would be, it is pretty grounded in the way that it, it's approached. But kind of later on, you, you kind of learn how to juggle and, and go about things and use your skills and tech to kind of kind of manage combat in a way that makes sense and, and differentiates itself from Batman. But at the very beginning, you could definitely see those comparisons. The Again, the big things are web swinging combat and New York. So combat is not amazing, but it's definitely a lot better than people anticipated us going into it. And in hindsight, it's still really, really good. Uh, Spider-Man is one of the few PS4 games I've actually platinumed. So I've actually gone on my way to play a lot of it. Um, I played through the DLC. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and so the big part of that is the web swinging. The web swinging is really good. The traversal is very good. The wall climbing is very good. It's a little sticky around things like... Uh, 
like the stairwells on the sides of the buildings in New York. Uh, he, he definitely traverses a lot better than in any other game, 100%. There's still some things that are a little bit, little bit wonky, but in terms of like swinging through alleyways, swinging through buildings, swinging around buildings, uh, running on walls, for the most part, they nail it. There's one or two little nitpicks, but again, for the most part, they, they've understood and really like sat down to think about how this would work, especially with the controller, not just how do we make it feel good, but also in a, in a control scheme that makes sense. So they, they definitely put a lot of thought and consideration into that. Um, the physics are also really well done. Um, there was a piece I remember seeing because the lighting is actually really well done in, in this game. And it's one of the things that got highlighted because it had a, I think it had a photo mode at launch. And just the textures are really, really, really good. And the lighting is what shows those textures. So at night, there's a large difference in the dark and light areas. Um, you know, the lights of New York City, stuff like that. Um, and then during the day, uh, it's very bright and colorful. There's a lot of reflections, things like that. So they did a lot, a lot with it visually as well. Um, and performance wise, it, it runs really well as well. I don't recall having any hiccups in it at all um, at, at launch or in the time since that I've played it. So everything about it as a game, especially as a Spider-Man fan coming into it, um, I was worried because again, Activision handled the IP for so long that I was like, oh boy, here we go. Worst case scenario, this is another shitty Spider-Man game, but at least it's a Spider-Man game. Um, and they didn't do that. And they also found a way to make the story a little bit more interesting. Marvel seems to understand that at this point, everybody understands Spider-Man's origin story. We don't need to get into that. And so we're jumping into areas where we can explore uh, Spider-Man and Peter Parker as, as two individual characters that have lives, have to go about their daily business and, and how he manages his adult life with his his superhero life and that he's also an average guy he's not captain america he's not bruce banner he's not tony stark he's not a, an exceptional person peter parker as you know is known as whereas spider-man is um and, that, and that's kind of the dynamic that it's a very superman clark kent kind of dynamic uh honestly so i appreciate that the the storytelling has gone into that and they're telling their own story in ways that matter with connections with with different types of characters and kind of the universe they they kind of built there and uh i'm really glad that it's getting a sequel and so i'm very much looking forward to that um and then the last thing is uh, i guess we can end on the the scope of manhattan uh it doesn't really focus on anywhere outside of manhattan but uh, if you spent any time looking at a map or even being in new york you manhattan island is massive uh, in and of itself, so it's not a small map. Uh, and it, it's been done a million times in Spider-Man games, but it's been scaled down massively in a lot of those games. And here it's been scaled down as well, obviously. It's obviously not as large as, as the real city, but it, it's big enough that it can kind of create that illusion. I'm not from New York, I've only been to Manhattan once. Um, people that are from New York and have been and spent a lot of time in Manhattan say, you know, it's missing a few things here and there of kind of, kind of spots that people are accustomed to and used to. But, you know, for the most part, it kind of gets the point across. And I think that's, that's ultimately the takeaway from it is, is that there were really low expectations for this game and it actually turned out to be a pretty quality title. Uh, again, not, not perfect by far. Um, but I think really when the second one comes out, the expectations obviously are going to be much higher for it. And I think those expectations will be met and hopefully exceeded. So, not only its potential as a game and what it is doing, but also the potential it has as a franchise is one of the reasons why we think it's, it's best to highlight it as one of the best games of the generation. So that's all I have for you for now, friends. Uh, we do this on a, a weekly basis, bi-weekly basis. We do two a month um, on the first and the second, or the first Tuesday and the last Tuesday, I think is how we do it. I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of stuff going on in the dynamics of this channel and, and kind of ambassadors and what we're doing. So um, point is these two of these go out every month. We're doing two of these every month till the, I think near the end of the year, basically because we're only gonna have a month or two with next gen. 
So we're going to put out a bunch of stuff over the course of the year. Uh, of course, we want to hear what you have to say and what you are working on uh, through the games of the generation, what you think are some of the best gems, and uh, maybe some things that we, we've overlooked. So of course, we want to hear from you. Please let us know. And as always, I'm Ambassador Michael. Uh, if you would like to continue to support, support us in any way, shape, or form, engagement is super helpful. Like, share, subscribe, fa like the Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, all that kind of crap. And if you're feeling really generous, we have a Patreon. Uh, we're kind of going to revamp that this year. So, uh, But until then, I'm Ambassador Michael. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.